Howdy, folks. It's me, Kendra T. All right, so today I am presenting how to make a Google form and how to use that Google form to make a virtual speech therapy survey to start scheduling your students. All right, so that's a couple of steps. And I am not sharing my camera because I didn't feel like putting on lipstick today. And I already have some on in this picture. So there you go. <laughs> what have I said before? If you've watched my other videos about Google, I have said Google runs my world. Here it is. It's, this is a Google form. All right. I'll show you how to get there. Let me just start a new tab. So here we go. Up here, the Google apps and this tic-tac-toe board looking button, you push that and you will see all of the Google apps that you have access to. So here is the forms. Click that and you are going to create by starting with a blank. So first I'm gonna give myself a title. This is going to be my test virtual. And you could do this with anything, speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, survey. I like to call it a survey, all right? So now, boom, there's that title. It's the title of the document and the title of the form. So on the right side are your different types of things you can add on to your survey. So the first thing they've already put in here is untitled question, okay? Um, you are going to enter in whatever question you want. It might be a good idea to put in the email address, but you don't necessarily have to because you can set your form to collect the email addresses where the person has to put it in in order to submit the form. So I learned this the hard way. So let's say student name, okay? Now, if I want my uh, people, my parents to be able to put in their student's name, then I will make this a short answer. See, there's that option, short answer. And then that puts a blank right there. And I want this question to be required because if you don't put it there, I won't know whose student this is for. So that's a required question, gotta do it. Now let me add another question. The round circle with the plus sign is how you add a question. And it's gonna add it up under the last question. So for this one, I wanna get some information. I want you to say, um, I want you to tell me a school name. And I, I'll show you all my version of this form when you make a google form you can't actually share it with people without it being connected directly to your profile and email so that means that i've had a couple of co-workers ask me hey can you share that form so that we can uh, adapt it and use it well not really because if i share it by sending you the link then that means that if you just go ahead and send that link then all of the responses that come in are going to come to me and to my email, not to you and your information. So uh, I can't really share it so that people can just adapt it. You basically got to look at it and use it as inspiration to make your own. OK, so now school name. I want to make this a multiple choice. So here are the types of questions you could make right here. You can have them write a short answer, write a paragraph. Who wants that? Multiple choice check boxes, drop down menu, or uh, file upload. You could do a linear grid, or linear scale, multiple choice grid, or a checkbox grid. You could add the date in, oh man, Google screen share. Let's see, move, okay, and the time. So if you want them to be able to add a timestamp to it. So for this one, I want multiple choice. And now I'm going to enter in my, my choices, elementary or let's say middle school. MS. All right, so it gives you two choices, but you can always add more. See right here, it's a light gray text. That means that it's text waiting to be used. Click it, and now you can use it. High school, I could add more options if I want to, or as they say, I can add other. So that's a blue text. That means that uh, that'll put that text right there. So now there we go, other. Okay. Um, now, if I want to make another kind of question, let me add another question to this survey. Boop. 
So this next question is going to be a yes or no question, which let's see. No, that's a multiple choice. So let's add a check boxes question. Check all of the devices you own. OK, again, I'm going to show you what my actual questions are on the Google form that I created. This portion of the video is just to show you how to make a Google form. Uh, let's see, iPad. Let's add another one by pressing the return the tab. Ooh, there we go. Or enter. Let's say smartphone. Enter. Um, computer. Okay. Uh, and I could keep going on and on. So this way, the person doing the form can just check all the ones that apply to them. They're not limited to a certain number of choices. Again, this is a required question. So far, all of my questions are required. The school name is required. What's the trash can icon mean? Delete. That's universal. Let's add another question. This question, I wanted to make, let's make a drop down question, drop down, drop down. So this question is, say, going to be a um, child's teacher, right? Um, if I'm getting information from a parent and I need to know their teacher, then I would write in their teacher names, Smith, Johnson. This is a good option if you wanted to pre given give some pre-selected choices and then you want it uh but you like you didn't want to have a check box because you don't need for it to be check all the ones that apply you know but you needed more options than say just a standard multiple choice so there's a drop down menu and then there's one more question i'm scrolling down and you see as i scroll down to the end of the questions i created so far this menu box follows me along like a little creeper OK, when I select this question on the left side of the box is a blue highlighting line. So that lets you know this is a question I'm on so that when I add a new question, it's going to go right below that. There it is. And now I have made a my my form that I've made my survey uses a short answer, multiple choice check boxes. Mainly that's it. I didn't use a drop down menu. And then these other ones, multiple choice grid, I I didn't use those in the in my question survey, my survey, but you certainly could. Multiple so now I have created a survey. I want to customize it just a little bit. Here on the top right handed right top right corner of the screen are three buttons. These are settings and these are menu options basically. Anytime you want to customize anything, there you go. Customize the theme. You can choose an image for your header, you know, whatever you think is fun or represents your needs. So let's do, uh, you know, a little speech pathway, something like that. I'm going to click it and then insert it. Now watch. Boom, now I got a picture at the top of my survey. And this one is grayscale, but you can always change the colors and choose some custom colors that you want to add to it. Let's do a little bit of red here and there. Now we got some colors added to the section headers and things like that. All right, font style. You can also change that too if you want to get that picky. Uh -huh. Okay, um, in the settings menu, this little gear wheel here, anytime you see a gear wheel, that means settings or menu. You can make your survey collect email addresses. So when they fill it in, they're going to have to put their email address in for you. OK, and you can restrict it to trusted users or limited response like these are some things. OK, and you can also do your make a, a presentation if you want again and a quiz. And again, this doesn't fit my needs. So these forms can be used to send to your students as a quiz where they have to submit their answers and then the whole Google form universe that'll score them and do everything for you, but we're not using it for that purpose. So now let's preview this survey, see how it looks. See the little eye? Okay, it's gonna open it. So anytime a parent or whomever you're sending this to, when they open the link, this is how it's gonna look to them. See, we got a red star for required, so it lets you know what the required answers are, 
okay? Says student, and I'm gonna choose a school, elementary, the child's teacher, that's Johnson, and then check all of the devices. All right, so I'm pretty much done. I'm gonna submit my answers. And that is how your survey recipients will see and interact with the survey that you created, okay? Now, here I am, this is my page as the creator, where I see my survey, I can make adjustments to my survey and everything, all right? Now to send, oh, let me click on these three dots, three vertical dots here in the Google Chrome world means more menu. So you have more options, okay, of things to do. I will come back around to printing and that's the only one that I've used that applies to me. So now you got the survey, you created it, you need to send it out to your parents. How do you do that? Oh, look, this big purple button that says send. And you get the choice to send via email, uh, directly in the email. You're going to put in the user's email address. You can also make it a link. And so when you make it a link, you copy it, or you can push this copy button here <laughs> in the dialog box. And now it's copied to your clipboard. And then you would say, go to an email. Uh, your email, open up a new email and put this in your email. Say, hey, you know, do this, e do this uh, survey for me. One of my coworkers made a form and she emailed the form link to herself. And then on her phone, she opened up her email where most of us do access our email from, right? She opened up her email and she copied and pasted the link here to her parents in a text saying, hey, please fill out this survey to start services. And so that way they got it on their phone in a text. They can just click the link and get to this survey and easily complete it and submit it. They don't have to do anything else, any download, downloading or document creating or anything like that. Again, here are my questions. And then here are the responses. See, 26 responses of the survey that I sent out. Uh, what was I gonna say? All right, so there are my questions. Here are my responses, 26 respondents, okay? Now, again, here's a summary, which kind of tells you, you know, some, some means and medians and analysis of the answers. The question gives you a, um, gives you all of the answers by question. So I asked for my students' initials, and these are all of their initials, and then I could go to the next question and see the child's school, and I see all of the answers to the school. OK, individual individual is where you see here's the menu. I'm scrolling fast. because I don't want you to see these emails, but <laughs> here is the um, all of the respondents emails that I captured. And then here's my test that I have. OK, so I can click on the email respondent that I want to look at and then I can scroll and see that person's answers test. OK, OK. All right, okay, so I see all of the answers. Here's one way to see all the answers. Another way to see all of the answers is to make it to a spreadsheet. So here we are, view responses in spreadsheet. And I'm gonna go back to my test virtual therapy summer survey so I can show you the spreadsheet. All right, so again, this is still my survey creating, uh, you know, portal or page of the survey of the form. Here is that same icon that Google Sheets uses for an Excel type document, click on that. It's going to ask me to create a new spreadsheet. Yes, please. And there we are. It has input all of the questions here into categories at the top, and then each one has um, the answers. And I could scroll all the way to the end to see all the answers. And this is a good way to see all of your answers stacked up and down horizontally, and then all the answers going, wait, vertically, and then all the answers going horizontally, okay? So that's how you make a, a Google form. You can go ahead and use that to make you a survey to start getting your virtual speech therapy services together, okay? I'll do a separate video on that. Thanks, bye, holla koala.